Uh, I welcome members to the fifth meeting in 2015 of the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee and ask members to turn off mobile phones, please. Agenda item one is a decision on taking business in private. It's proposed we take items five and six in private. Item five is consideration of a draft report on the Assisted Suicide Scotland Bill. And item six is consideration of the committee's second quarterly report for the parliamentary year 2014-15. Do we agree to take these in private, please? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item two, then, is a instrument subject to affirmative procedure, and we begin with the Firefighters' Pension Scheme, Consequential Provisions Scotland Regulations 2015 Draft. Regulation 13 refers to an upper, till, upper tier ill health pension. That term is not defined in the regulations or in the Firefighters' Pension Scheme Scotland Regulations 2015, which were laid in Parliament after the present regulations and in respect of which the present regulations make consequential provision. Those later regulations refer instead to a higher tier ill health pension. Terminology used in the present instrument is inconsistent with that used in the instrument in respect of which it makes consequential provision. And the term upper tier ill health pension as used in regulation 13 is accordingly unclear. Does the committee therefore agree to draw the instrument to the attention of the Parliament under reporting ground H as the mere meaning of regulation 13 could be clearer? Thank you. Further matter has been raised by our legal advisers. These regulations were laid before the Parliament on the 14th of January 2015. The regulations containing the new firefighters' pension scheme were subsequently laid on the 26th of January 2015. The lack of clarity in regular Regulation 13 could have been avoided had the new scheme regulations been laid prior to or at the same time as the present regulations. The commitment given by the Minister for Parliamentary Business in Session 3 to the effect the Scottish Government would avoid staggering the laying of related instruments where possible has not been met in this case. Sir. Um, I think, Convener, the, the, there is a patent error of process here in that it makes no sense uh, for consequential provisions to be laid before the instrument to which they are consequential is available for consideration. Um, this may or may not have practical implications because you can't determine that at the point you're looking at a consequential provision. Um, I make this uh, comment in relation to the Firefighters Pension Fund, the current agenda item, uh, but also the subsequent ones on the National Health Service Pension Scheme, Police Pensions Consequential Provisions, Teachers Pension Consequential Provisions, uh, I think are all caught by the same, same remark. And I think it's important that we communicate in an appropriate way with the policy committee uh, so that if at the point that they are considering uh, these instruments, um, they are not in possession uh, of the instrument to which these are consequence, they should take account of that uh, in their consideration. Uh, and we should certainly make sure that the government is aware of our concerns about us as a committee being asked to consider consequences of something which we do not have before us to assess what it is consequences to. Indeed. So, John. Just to um, support everything that Stuart Stevenson has said, um, I agree with him absolutely. Um, we are being invited in agricultural terms to put the cart before the horse and consider consequentials when we don't have the instrument itself. It may be that the lead committee will also find themselves in that position. I don't think that's a proper position for them to find themselves in. Uh, so I think we should uh, alert the Lead Committee to that possibility and so, indeed um, make the government aware of our concern about this failure in process that right. highlighted by Stuart. So would the committee agree that I should write to the Lead Committee about the specific case, write to the Minister of Parliamentary Business about the general principle and in this particular case write to the Deputy First Minister because it was his department to produce this particular statutory instrument? Are we agreed on that? Thank you very much indeed. No formal reporting grounds have been raised by our legal advisers on the National Health Service Pension Scheme Consequential Provisions Scotland Regulations 2015 draft, nor on the Police Pensions Consequential Provisions Scotland Regulations 2015 draft. However, as with the previously discussed instruments, and Stuart Stevenson has just referred to this, committee may consider writing to the Minister of Parliamentary Business and the Deputy First Minister to highlight the matter and to the lead committee specifically to point out our concerns on these instruments. Um, 
Last session, the Minister for Parliamentary Business gave an undertaking to the Committee regarding how packages of instruments would be handled. As mentioned, the Scottish Government undertook to try to avoid, wherever possible, staggering the laying of instruments that cross-refer to one another. And the Government also undertook to provide the Committee with a copy of draft related instruments that are not ready for making, again, wherever possible. This did not happen in the case of these instruments. These two sets of regulations refer in many places to the new scheme, regulations for the payment of retirement pensions to or in respect of health workers and members of the Police Scotland, Police Service of Scotland, which are yet to be finalised. The regulations also modify how various statutory provisions apply to the new schemes. For example, Regulations 14 and 15 of the Police Pensions Consequential Provisions Scotland Regulations 2015 refer to the transitional provisions of the new scheme regulations. Better planning and preparation of the instruments could have avoided the potential anomaly of determining whether consequential provisions are satisfactory prior to the scrutiny of the regulations pertaining the, the new pension scheme for which they relate. The timing and laying of packages of instruments was previously raised by the committee with the Minister for Parliamentary Business in relation to the Children's Hearing Scotland Act 2011, Safeguard as Further Provision Regulations 2012, SSI 2012. 12336 and the Town and Country Planning and Miscellaneous Amendments Scotland Regulations 2012 SSI 2012 325. Those instruments also raise some general issues as to the programming of subordinate legislation. Does the committee therefore agree to write to those ministers and to the committee drawing their attention to all these instruments? Agreed. John. Uh, agreed. And could I just say that's perhaps something that we should consider um, putting into our annual report? Um, this um, weakness of, of process, uh, failure might be too strong a word, but nonetheless, um, it, there is an opportunity for, for it, it turning into a shambles, and we are only seeking to avoid that, so I think we should highlight it wherever we can. No points have been raised by our legal advisers on the Teachers' Pension Scheme, Consequential Provisions, Scotland, Regulation 2015, Draft, nor on the Land and Building Transaction Tax, Subsale Development Relief and Multiple Dwellings Relief, Scotland Order 2015, Draft. Is the committee content with those instruments, please? Thank you, sir. Yep. Item 3, instruments subject to negative procedure. No points have been raised by our legal advisers on the Plant Health Scotland Amendment Order 2015, SSI 2015-10, nor on the Revenue Scotland First Planning Period Order 2015, SSI 2015-16. Is the committee content with these, please? Agenda item four, instruments not subject to any parliamentary procedure. And again, no points have been raised by our legal advisers on the Marriage and Civil Partnership Scotland Act 2014, commencement number four and saving provisions, order 2015, SSI 2015 14, and on the Landville Tax Scotland Act 2014, commencement number two, order 2015, SSI 2015. 17, nor on the Revenue Scotland and Taxpayers Act 2014, commencement number three, order 2015, SSI 2015, 18. Is the committee content with those instruments, please? Yes. Thank you very much. That brings us to agenda item five, and I move the meeting into private.